is Keep It Rap episode four with Cuba Lini, Cuba Mavelli, Cuba Smalls, Cuba Biggie J- Now, nah, let me stop. The Cuban from Maryland, one of the greatest battlers of all time. Whether y'all know it or not, this is the man. Cuban, how you feeling today? Feeling good, brother. How you doing, man? How you doing today? I'm well, man. I appreciate you even doing this. I know you got a busy schedule, you know what I'm saying? I want to, um, let's get right into it, man. How did you even come up with the name Cuban? Uh, it was given to me. By whom, Cuban? Um, well, really, it was one of one of the many, many nicknames that my father had that it just didn't happen to stick to him. So I went to a certain area and they called me that. And I like the way it sounds, so I just stuck with it. And did you start out battling or were you originally like a rapper making songs and stuff like that? Oh, I started out with music, of course. Who were your biggest influ- influences musically? Uh, probably Tupac and Kanye West. Okay, like Cuban. Lil Wayne or some shit. Okay, yeah. Tupac. I, I see the I see, the way you carry yourself, your composure. I can see the Tupac influence for sure. Um, so what got you into battling? One of my older, uh, I got two older brothers. My oldest one, he knew uh, somebody named Moxie Valor or something. Man. He knew my oldest brother as a rapper. Said he had a battle rap league. Wanted my brother to rap. My brother was like, nah, I don't rap no more, but you know what? I'm going to sign my little brother up. So he signed me up because he knew I watched like URL and shit on, online. Why that's a reason to sign me up for battles, I have no idea. But it was like a man's bet between us. He wanted to see if I could do it, and I had nothing better to do. So I was like, fuck it. And then that's how I ended up stuck here. Nah, that's kind of fire. Now, let me add this is before your Young Grizz battle? Yeah. Okay, so who, do you remember who you battled at that time? Of course. I had a, I had a, I had a tryout, I guess what you'll call him, a trial battle with a dude named uh, TZ. I retired his ass, though. He ain't never, he ain't never do that. <laughs> TZ, <laughs> TZ gone now? He on battle rap? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He ain't never. He was like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew off that first battle with TZ that battle rap is for you. And you no. got the, what, what was what was the battle that gave you that recognition where you felt like, all right, this is my thing? Oh, I still don't feel like that. Come on, Cuban. No um, way. <laughs> I do not think this is my thing. <laughs> Cuban, I, I, can't, I can't agree with that. I mean, Young Cannon, next. Trufo, oops, you've got some incredible battles, bro. There's no way you can tell me this isn't your thing. And last year, you battled against Tay Rock. It is the highest viewed battle on OSBL's YouTube channel. You're Shout almost at 300,000 views, bro. Yeah, I don't mean this. My it's, listen, it's a lot of successful people in the culture where <laughs> this is not their thing. All right. I'm not. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that this isn't my thing. I just I don't. I don't feel that way. Like, I don't feel okay. like, yeah, this is where I belong. Uh, I haven't felt like that yet. Okay. All right. Well, tell me what's the battle that at least you felt gained you the respect, like where niggas was like, okay, Cuban is a problem. I don't know if I had it yet. Probably Tay Rock, the closest I've got to it. But Okay. Well, let's let's talk about that battle because I'm very proud of that battle. So when you on that stage and the battle's about to happen, walk me through your prep for that battle and walk me through how you were feeling during the battle and after the battle. Uh, prep wise, I would say that was an interesting battle for me because I was about to have a baby. <sighs> I was working this uh stupid ass job. Uh, I hated this damn job. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I was writing for Tay Rock like all at once. So it was like, oh, and I had just moved into this new place. It was a stressful time, but I was uh I was super motivated. Like I probably. I worked on that shit every day, like for like months straight. Like I just every day I'm I'm in them notes. I'm trying to add something, I'm trying to change something, I'm trying to make it better. I probably worked on that shit every day until the day of the battle. Like I was steadily making changes. That's incredible. So when you standing on that stage, 
there's a moment where you I've watched the I've watched that battle a million times, by the way. I'm probably responsible for like a hundred thousand views. But you standing on a stage right at the start and you say, you sigh and you're like, I'm so happy to be here. That felt real wow. genuine. It was. I meant that. Okay. I, I mean, for real, I, uh, because I should have been getting battles like that. I mean, it's just like the truth is the truth. It's just like at the end of the day, that's just all it is. It's just like, and you know, people like the, I don't know what, I, I picked up a lot of the hate, I would say, I like at a very, I, I kind of damn near remember when it happened, but it's like, I should have been getting battles of that nature instead of people pretending like I was trash or I couldn't hang with certain people. I should have been battling people like Tay Rock and, and of those sorts, in my opinion. So I would agree with you because the that battle proves you you could stand toe to toe with people of that caliber and salute to Tay Rock for creating that opportunity. But it was earned, bro. That wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you're well respected in your region. And I think Rock, you know what I'm saying? He he acknowledges that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tay Rock has been honestly the only like f far as battle rappers who are established. He's the only person who used to like super, super promote and you know like wanted to tell the world that he thought I was great. So I, he always been like since like two thousand and seventeen, eighteen when I met him like the first time he seen me rap. He's always been like you know supporting me telling me that he believed that i was one of the best like his favorite dude from maryland and all this other stuff so that's shout incredible out to him, that's yeah, incredible to that. yeah yeah always. that's amazing all right so i want to get into one of the battles i really like you versus young cannon talk to me about the prep work behind that and what was that experience like for you um I knew I was going to kick Young Cannon ass. Like, I, I know nobody else believed it, but I did. Like, that was one of them battles where it's the only battle of my career I've ever said I did this. Like, I hunted Young Cannon down. It was like, I'm, I'm doing the little shots fired videos, and I don't even usually do those. I'm doing the shots fired. I'm trying to curate this matchup. And it was because he was considered to be like the boogeyman at the time. Like if you was a a, a new up and coming battler, it was like you stay away from DNA, stay away from John John. And Young Cannon's name was in that conversation. But I just felt like I could beat Young Cannon. Like it was nothing personal. It was just like you know I could kick Young Cannon's ass. I don't know what everybody talking about. And they said he beat a few of my friends. You know, you know what I mean with Jack Boy being one of them. And I like this thing that it, it kind of started before Merlin, but like we all kind of embodied it in Maryland. We're just like, it's a get back gang thing. It's like, if you you get out on one of the homies, you know what I'm saying, pause for safety, get your PP if necessary. We definitely plan on retaliating. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, you know, and that get back a motherfucker, ain't no time on get back. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big fact. So, I was really impressed by that battle. Um, I also really, really liked your true foe battle. Do you remember that battle? He pissed me off. He pissed me off bad, man. What happened? Talk to the people. King Von had just died. So it was like, I was sad Rest shit, in peace, King I, Von. Yeah, because his music fire, a big fan, you know what I'm saying? And then true foe during the preparation, like the, the, the lead up to the battle. He, he he was just talking crazy to me. Like, I don't know. He what did he there. say that really got to you? Um, I said on phone them to him and he made it seem like I, I tried to put something on his dead homies. And I'm just like, now we both know. <laughs> <laughs> I was real mad. I said, yeah, I'm going to kill this nigga. Man. Well done. Well done. So is that when you became officially URL or what was the battle that locked you in over there? Uh, Young Grizz was the battle that probably locked me in. Okay. Wow. Well, so this is Band Legacy, I believe. Band Legacy 1. Yeah. Okay. And how was that experience? Did they lock you in before or after the battle? Um, I want to say before, but you know, with URL, nothing is official until it's on paper. Or so, but it wasn't on paper till after the battle. Like beforehand, I was supposed to battle Fettuccine Twenty Ooh, as really? a as a band battle, and that was supposed to be like my my first battle sign your contract and all of that but instead i ended up battling grizz first which was the first time i got paid by url and then i got a contract and i started there i think it was grizz yeah 
That's incredible. So when you when you signed the URL, that's that's the NBA. How did it feel? How did it feel joining the team? Um, I never I I didn't have the 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 glory feel victory moment that a lot of people have in battle rap. Like for me, it was more like a you know, I was fighting cause uh, uh, to even get there. So all it just felt like to me was just like, all right, like now we're fighting to stay here and elevate. Like I, I never really took a moment to feel like, damn, you got drafted. Cause I didn't feel drafted. You know what I mean? I more or less walked on to the, to the team tryout and I was just good enough for them to not turn me away pretty much. It was, I was never, I never felt drafted. I would say. Like, Have you I, always had that position of the of the underdog in in the fight? Only in battle rap. Why do you think that is? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I started I started young, and then I ain't know nothing. So it was like we ain't really have as much. You know, the structure that that my area has now to me is just like a beautiful thing to see. Because when I started, it just didn't exist. Like there wasn't. And there was no successful people you would even want to listen to because it's like nobody was established yet. There is no twerk. There is no, you know, these people exist, but they're not stars yet. There is no drugs isn't even established like that yet. There's no Spanish Harlem yet. There's no, you know, we had like Danger Zone, maybe Prep, Ty Law, but it's like they're so far removed from our class that it's like, yeah, I can't even count that. So it was like, it was more like everybody around here was just trying to figure it out. So like, you know. I, so I you always, felt like you were navigating a space kind of uh, without knowing exactly what you were doing? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Honestly, if it wasn't for the league that I started on, uh, shout out to Bob Benders, they was the only reason I was doing battles. It was like, I did that first battle just to prove to my older brother I could do it. I had no more interest in, in battle rap as far as rapping at all. I was just going to stay a fan. But the league thought I had potential, so they just kept, you know, booking me and keeping me active. And it was something to do. And it didn't cost me nothing. It was fun. So I was like, yeah, I just keep doing it. And then eventually you just get, you know, into the whirlwind of the culture. Once the culture gets you, it's hard to just leave the culture. For sure. Agreed. Agreed. So when at what point did you get up with OSBL? Do you um, remember the first time you met Kells? Yes, but when I met Kells, OSBL wasn't created yet. Okay. Talk to the people about meeting Kells. So my first time that I can vividly remember meeting Kells was around the time I battled Ryder. Um she was working with another league who I'm a, I'm a choose not to name just cause it ain't about them. <laughs> she was working with another league and she was trying to book me and it just never went down. Cause they, I think the league had, they tried to like book me a train ticket, but it was like one way. And I was just like, why, like, why would I do that? <laughs> and then, and then she ended up spinning the block, basically telling me, like, yo, I'm I'm gonna end up doing my own thing, like not associated with them. Like, I'm a, I'm gonna come book you. Like, like we're going and then I just love what she was doing with the area as far as her league anyway. So I, I wanted to be a part of it. Like I was always one of them people because I don't have a home league. My home league died, it didn't exist no more. So I was like, whoever's the biggest league in my area, that's I'm a just that's who I'm a support because I don't have a a natural home league, so I had the ability to just be a free agent, pretty much. That's kind of fire. That's kind of fire. Do you remember your next battle? After what, Grizz? Mm-hmm. I had Don Marino next. You had you had okay. How yeah, you had Don Marino, Squeako, Young Cannon, but at Born Legacy Eleven, you had next. Do you remember your next battle and that experience? Yeah, I think I'm missing one. I think, wait, no, nah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I ain't want to battle next. I, I did my due that. diligence, Cuban. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to battle next. Why didn't you want to battle next? It was a lateral move. And and this is it, this is my fault. This is a lot of my career. I felt like this was a problem. I should have just stood on the fact that I thought it was a lateral move and just not cared and just not did it. And just like, I'm not doing the battle. 
Cause that was one of them P battles. Like that was one of them battles P wanted me to do. And I was just like, man, I don't see the purpose. Like I just didn't see how it really could benefit me, the individuals too much, but it actually, a lot of people like that. Battle. It's a great battle. I, I was just say, about I to say. say he wrong. <laughs> a lot, a lot of, of people, people really like that. battle. I'm one of them for sure. Yeah. I didn't like that battle. I didn't want to battle next for sure. But you got to understand, I just beat young Cannon, and it was like, I fought, a like, I had to sit out for like six months, eight months to get that Young Kanan battle. And P, P booked me and Young Kanan out of his own pocket. P paid for my Young Kanan battle. So it's like I That's I went incredible. through a lot of trouble to get that Young Kanan battle because they just weren't – like it wasn't trying to treat me like I was worthy or like I deserved that battle for some reason. And then I cleared Young Cannon. So it was like, for me, it's like, nah, I'm not giving nobody a shot after I just battled Young Cannon because y'all wouldn't let me get a shot. So why do I owe some? I don't owe nobody nothing. I just got here. This is my first vet. And I won and probably did better than all of y'all thought I was going to do. I wanted to keep that energy rolling. Like, I'm not here for shots. I'm not here for the next man. It's not my job. And, I was, and I'm a lot younger than a lot of these other niggas, too. So it was like, what I look like training a nigga that's five years my senior in real life? That's not my job. So it was just like, I had a lot of frustrations <laughs> going into that next battle. Was, was it not, difficult navigating the politics of battle rap, do you feel like? Yeah, only because I didn't know anything. Like, now that I'm older, it, it don't bother me at all. You know what I mean? But back then, I wasn't really trying to navigate politics i'm just looking at it like listen i'm not no prima donna i'm not bougie it's just battle rap like, i'm not picking and choosing my plates that much like if if that's what the people want me to battle i'll battle them if that's what you're saying you want me to do i'll battle them but i just need you to understand that i want something that i want in return like you know what i mean but i i was never difficult which is a regret. I should have been a little bit more like difficult. <laughs> a little bit more difficult. <laughs> so tell me, what was your favorite battle? If you look back on your career, what's your favorite battle where you felt like, man, this was a great Cuban performance. I did exactly what I planned to do. Um, hmm, it's crazy. I got a few of these. They all random too. Uh, Go ahead, one, tell of, me one of my earliest ones was probably drugs, but like that was my first. Fire. That was my first main event. That was my first like big shot in the DMV, and and it was the last battle I did before I had left for the military. So that was like a pivotal moment for me. That's probably one. Then uh, my first time. I then I say the second time. It was the second time I rapped in front of Nunu because I battled twice this night. I had main event three rounds with Castro. And then me and Drugs did a two-on-two -two that same night. And I was, like, flawless. That's crazy. Yeah, I was flawless in both. And then she had text Chico and told Chico about me. Then he asked for, like, a, like some footage that I sent some links. And then Chico p booked me for the PGs. So that's that's an exclusive most people don't know. I wasn't scouted by Norbs. I wasn't P's pick. I'm actually I actually got on URL through Chico. I'm one of the rare few people who can say Chico's the reason that I was on URL. That's incredible, considering most of us don't even know what Chico looked like. So that's that's incredible. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's funny because it's like, well, you know that that's why also I feel like a lot of my struggles on URL came from though because none of the scouts scouted me. So it was like, in their opinion, they looking like, how the fuck did you get here? So they thought that I did a lot of uh, backhand, like, you know, backdoor, back channel type ways to get to URL when really it had nothing to do with me. But, you know, I mean, I felt like that played a part as well. I was always constantly being put in the you got to prove yourself situation because it's like none of us wanted you. We didn't scout you. I inherited you. So it's kind of like one of those things to me. And at what point for you was a battle that, uh, you took the battle, you were excited about the battle, but it just didn't pan out the way you wanted it to, and it made you kind of rethink your approach to battle rapping. Oh, man, Dougie. Oh, man, my Dougie battle. <laughs> oh, my Talk God. about that. And and the battles vaulted, not because of me or not even because there was, like, a clear loser. Because, honestly, it was actually a really – me and Dougie is actually a really good battle. 
it was just bad footage. And I think somebody got kicked off stage during our battle. You know what I'm saying? Real ghetto. So it was just like, but that battle right there was supposed to be my moment. Like I was supposed to whip Dougie ass and I was supposed to like catapult me to stardom. And it just, Dougie had this second round. Like he just had his mind made up that he was like, Back then, we used to call it the Dougie that battled chess. So it was like he he just like showed up as that chess Dougie for me, and I was just like, oh my god! Like this second <laughs> round, it was like, a long night. <laughs> no, nah, I, I technically won. Like the first round, I cleared Dougie. Like I was from I beating his ass. I'm like, let's go. This is what I was looking for. Then the second round, he was just losing his mind. Like I don't know no other way to describe it. I don't know. It was and he had like a five minute round just straight like haymakers like <laughs> and and it's just you know at the time his stock wasn't considered that high so it was like me having a close good battle with Dougie no matter if I won or not was not good for business like that pretty much restarted my prove yourself process because I had that debatable with Dougie and Do it's a battle I asked for too I wanted to battle Dougie do you feel like um a lot of times you had those battles that would kind of restart the process over and over? Uh, No, because I never felt like I was moving up or down. Because I wasn't. Hmm. I wasn't progressing negatively or positively. I was kind of just in a... I was just in a space that... And it is no knock to P because I rock with P, but I was just in a space where P was comfortable with me being that pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it just like... In his opinion, I was young, so he was felt like he I had time. Like he didn't feel no, no, uh, no urgency to to push me forward. And then I was always doing enough to not to not get knocked too far back on my own. So he was I was just working in a space he was comfortable with me working in. But he always kept me working, so I salute him for that. But it was just. I never really had many opportunities to progress or what you would say. Do you feel like, and this is just for us to understand as fans, there was, there's a difference in the perspective of how a battle rapper feels they're elevating versus how the fans see them elevating? I mean, yeah, because the fans, it's just a lot that the fans don't know or take into consideration, but they don't have to know it or take it into consideration. You know what I mean? Not really their problem. They just couldn't. I see what I see and I form an opinion. I mean, as a fan, I feel like you have the right to do such. But for me, it's like, I felt like that because if you were to ask a lot of fans, it was a lot of fans at one point in time, like when I first did the vest against Ryder, they would have told you I was one of the hottest up and comers, period, like in battle rap at the time. But it's like, whenever I had to have those conversations trying to negotiate with URL, I was, I was always met with stern pushback like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like i went i went viral on twitter for my rider clip and i was told at the time by a staff member that they don't count twitter views like that, that that's that, kind of crazy yeah they told me my views didn't count <laughs> and then later they ended up counting people's twitter views because they promote on twitter themselves but it was like what what do you really do about that? Am I supposed to go complain? Like, what am I supposed to do? So I didn't. I just, you know, made a mental note of it, and I just kept pushing for the most part. Like, but I was getting a lot of hate, man. I don't know why. I don't like saying that because everybody says that, but I have facts. <laughs> I have facts with mine. You I do get proof. a lot of hate, but Cuban, you do also get a lot of love, you know? And I know that in your position... It's sometimes the hate seems like it'll overpower the love, but the love is there. Uh, you've always shown a lot of love as well. You actually gave one of our spaces on uh, Eunice a great opportunity when you battled him live. Talk to us about why you you always so ready to give opportunities to others. Um, locally for me, I was always the benefit of being like like a chosen one like the people who didn't have to acknowledge me locally always did whether that was drugs wanting to battle me or tay rock you know promoting co-signing me or just in my area i never struggled to to get shots so being young back then and being a little bit more experienced now but still feeling young enough to be in tune with everybody i try my best to 
give any shot that anybody feels like is a shot, if that makes sense. Like the way I look at it is if you think battling me is a shot, then and you do the work or whatever is necessary, then I would be honored to give you a battle that is supposed to help you along your journey, just like many others did for me. That's that's very solid and honorable because not everybody is like that. Switching gears. Um, I want to ask you about your yes, writing style. You have a very st- one of the lethal attributes that you have is the structure in your material. It is very structured and you build up incredible momentum. You start off at one pace and then you smoothly transition the paces. And before you know it, you're just bombing with the super smooth delivered haymakers. How did you put that style together? Um, well, it first started because the fans thought I couldn't rap. So when I first came in, <laughs> I know it sounds, uh, when I first came into battle rap, like a lot of the comments and just a lot of stuff they used to get on me was basically they thought I could perform and I had great energy. I was aggressive, but they just thought my penmanship was lacking. And a lot of it stemmed from because my first like year in battle rap, I was freestyling. I thought it was, you know, I, I'm there were no battle rappers where I'm from. I'm the only bat I'm the first battle rapper that I know of from where I'm from. So it was like I, I set the precedent for battle rap where I'm from. So it was like, but for me, I thought it was like, you know, you pull up on the block and and y'all y'all rap. Like you just go head to head and you pick a winner. So it was like I'm just always thinking I'm gonna show up. I might got a couple ideas in my mind, but it's like you just freestyle, like you just figure it out as you go. So then once I realized, like, okay, times has changed, like, you know, it was a way more structured, the penmanship matters, the rapping. I wanted to prove to everybody, like, yo, I really rap better than all these people. I just didn't know how you were supposed to prepare for battles. But now that I'm going to prepare, I'm going to show y'all that, that these people don't rap better than me. So then from there, I just always wanted to be a little different. Like, that was really where it started from, like, Cause I know how to properly do pretty much anything you want to accomplish in battle rap, but the challenge then becomes, you know, I want to be different. I want to be special. I want to try to push the culture, not, you know, be pushed by the culture. So it's like, if, you know, like now I see the trends in my area, I see the things that people are gravitating towards and, you know, you know, like I know, I know the people who started these styles that people are influenced by. I never wanted to be influenced by, I always wanted to be an influencer as far as writing style. That's just something that I, I always worked hard. And my rapping background is a little bit different than a lot of other people's because I, I started with music and poetry. So it was like, you know, because a lot of times I'll do something that I consider simple, like an ABBA rhyme scheme, but in battle rap that'll like stand out to them because they just don't use these tools as often as rappers as you would think that we probably do. But it, that's all. But you definitely proved you could rap. Like your bank head battle, your your Danny battle. Was your Danny battle your toughest battle to date aside from Tay Rock? Hell no. What would you say was your toughest battle? Um, believe it or not, I knew I was gonna beat Danny. I was extremely <laughs> confident. I Let's ex- go. I was extremely confident going into that battle. But it's not, see, it's not the way everybody thinks. Because I explained this to Chilla Jones and I explained this to Danny Myers. You quote me on this. I told them both, I don't have to be better than you to beat you. So I feel like a lot of people get confused at the two like when you say you beat somebody or that you can they'd be like you're not better than them i never said i was like i never thought i was better than tay rock but i 100 percent thought i could win that battle you see what i'm saying like it's not the same thing <laughs> like this one night this one battle doesn't trump the many career nights he didn't had over time it's just I'm analyzing the matchup. I'm looking at his schedule. I'm thinking about fatigue. I'm considering the fact that there's no way he's going to prepare for me the way that I'm willing to prepare for him. And when I take what I'm good at and what what he, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I could win this battle. So I knew I was going to beat Danny. Like Danny was doing a lot at the time and I was taking Danny very, very serious. So I definitely, and we were battling in Philly, which I thought was very neutral. 
it was a bigger 100%. stage, a bigger crowd, like a thousand people. So it was like I was really excited. Like I said, nah, I'm not. I have to win this battle. Like, and it was I just w- a one rounder, so you know. I was very shocked, and I'm gonna be honest. I was shocked when you beat Chilla. That was an incredible feat to me. How did you feel during that battle? That was one of the toughest battles I had to prepare for. That was more what strategy than the actual bars. When you say that you knew you were gonna win, was it because you had a strategy? Well, yeah, it's just that I knew that, you know, we all know what Chilla does, and and he's very, very, very good at it, but I'm a Chilla fan, so it was like, I knew what he did. I didn't have no, I also just felt that I could do what he did good enough to hold my own, but I could do things that he can't do, so if I focus on them, I thought I could win that battle as well. But it was very hard to prepare for Chilla just as a writer. You know what I mean? He made me play defense. I don't like to play defense in battle rap. It's not something I do very often. Like I, <laughs> I, I don't like people dictating what I have to rap about. So it's like, and I'm here to attack you. I'm not here to hold a shield. You know what I'm saying? I want to hold a sword. So, but with Chilla, with Chilla, I needed a sword and a shield. So it was a little. I would say that made it interesting. But, but it thought, brought out a better version of you, and you definitely won that battle clear. And I was on vacation. I was at Disney World preparing for Chilla, so that was tough, too. Was like, <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bumped into Shuni and Fettuccini down there. <laughs> we was down there at the same time. <laughs> That's so funny. So you just, like, being a little teacup spinning right in your bars? Like, how did you How did you even do that? Um, I didn't prepare much on vacation. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> 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 and it was my first time going to, like, because we went to the Harry Potter jump and all those that Universal Studio, yeah, I, that was my first time doing all of that. I was house slithering and shit. I ain't write no bars. I ain't no bars. That's so funny. Behind the scenes, um, the recently I watched the battle. Uh, this new kid, this kid, uh, he's apparently not new, but this guy named Jay Moore, who's yeah, incredible, I, I and you Jay were one Moore. of the first people I wanted to set up with him. And then I discovered that y'all had already battled. Yeah, we've battled twice. That's incredible. Would there ever be a third, or are you done with that? Why? No. <laughs> I just think that both of y'all styles have elevated we so battled, much. We battled three rounds on URL. And then I, the other I league, which shall version. not be mentioned early on. And they, they vaulted it because... So this is another thing about my journey. It's like my story. Like, people just... And I don't really... I never care to complain because it just be like, work harder. You know what I mean? But... When I battled Jay Moore, I 30 Jay Moore. Like, he, he wasn't clean. Like, I, I kind of got Jay Moore out of here. But uh, P, P, P likes Jay Moore. Well, he liked Jay Moore at the time. And they didn't think that it just wasn't a great battle back and forth. And it would have did a lot more damage to Jay Moore than they thought it would have helped me. So they just moved me up and gave me a better battle. My next booking, which was actually the Young Grizz battle on Band Legacy. But I was coming off of a 30 on Jay Moore, which I wanted that out, especially because I had a homie in Special Forces when I was in the military. He gave me his actual bulletproof vest, like the one he really like used. <laughs> like he was going to jail if I didn't get that junk back to him. <laughs> That's crazy. I wore it all three rounds, and the world never seen it because they they vaulted the battle for Jay Moore. I was pissed. <laughs> That's <laughs> I was crazy. Pissed. <laughs> and you know that's just like, and I feel like that affected me a lot on URL because it wasn't. It wasn't like I didn't care, but I went through a lot of battles where it was like, I didn't care. It's like, if I win, I'm not going to move up. If I lose, I'm not going to move down. So it was just like, I'm basically just getting through my material at this point. Like, I'm just collect my little money, get on my flight. But it's like, I ain't I ain't going nowhere positively or negatively. So it was like that affected me for probably a while. And it was true for a long time. Like I proved it. Like I was like, <laughs> it ain't matter what I did. I was just kind of just stuck. And I just got tired of being stuck at one point. But now, I understand. Yeah. What's your favorite part on your journey thus far in battle rap? What's your favorite part about the journey? My favorite part. Oh, definitely was caffeine. Caffeine. Oh, that was amazing. Why? Um, I had to, I, I had to fight to get on caffeine, man. Like that was a, that was a real, that was a real climb for me. Like, because when I got taken out of Ultimate Madness, which it had nothing to do with me, I was able to still negotiate 
uh, a caffeine performance that was owed to me because I had a caffeine contract. So it was like, you know, I had to go through a lot of trouble to get that. But really with just the experience, like I um I had I had a couple of my like my my homeboy and his like girl flew out. Um so I had them, they they got the COVID testing and everything, like they was in the building. So they just got to see the massive production, all you know what I mean, the refreshments in the back, the basketball court in the back. Like Caffeine Studios is a beautiful venue, if I have to say so myself. One of my favorite I've ever been to. So it was like just getting to enjoy that experience and, you know, doing your first real face-offs and, and all of that was, you know, like, it was humbling. Then I got to enjoy it with, like, you know, a few people close to me. So it was dope. I would say that was a big moment to me. It was last minute, too. Like, I only had, like, 12 days, 10 days notice before that caffeine battle because I had to battle whoever lost the finals of uh, real name Brandon and MVP. So... I couldn't know who I was battling until after that battle. So it was like, that was a, that was a big one for me. I really enjoyed that. What was your least, what has been thus far your least favorite part of battle rap? My least favorite part of battle rap? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, I, I would basically just say for me, my least favorite part is the, uh, the perceptions, like the narratives, only because I'm not really uh like I kind of just mind my business. I'm not really uh, like a oh let me go air my grievances public public kind of person. So it'd be like people be saying a lot of bullshit to me and about me that's just not accurate, and I just don't be caring enough to to like you know get their timeline straight and shit and that's probably my least favorite part. Cause if I was more controversial or more like a, I'm a, I'm a air shit publicly type of person, I would probably actually be further ahead than where I am only because it's just a lot of shit people don't know. I and mean, they just don't be true or accurate. And I just don't be saying anything. <laughs> well, like, speaking wrong. of controversial, I try not to ask too many controversial questions, but at this time, I feel like one good controversial <laughs> question is okay. So brace yourself. Cuban, a lot of people don't know, but um, <clears throat> first of all, you're a happily, you know, you're in a great space now, beautiful family. So we're just going to speak in hypotheticals. Jesus Christ. You're in a great space now. But Man, hypothetically what's the speaking, what's the question? <laughs> and listen, That's hypothetically funny. speaking, behind the scenes, you're quite the sniper, brother. You huh? you used to be quite the sniper, brother. Huh? A lot of the baddies in battle rap. You wait, know what I'm wait. You definitely, Hold the fuck on. I was just. I, I told oh, you, y'all, this one, is sabotage. I thought I get one controversy. I'm just saying because you know when I maneuver when I was before I had a family as well I when I was maneuvering I when I was maneuvering in battle rap when I was a single man. I used to bump into Cuban a lot of times. You know what I mean? Cuban, I don't remember. You, you, I, you I were quite the I, sniper. I don't. Re- I I don't think I ever seen you out. Are you sure? Because there was a few times we was in the. And all right, we'll just move right along. No, yeah, but, I, but I'll answer the question though. Hypothetically, I, I, hypothetically, your jersey's in the rafters, Cuban. Is that I fair? I won't say that. I do not. First of all, only reason I won't say that is because I don't want to make it seem like. A lot of these ladies have got up on me because they have it. I'll be completely huh. honest. I'm huh. gonna go ahead and stop you right Some there. Some of the finest ones. All right, go ahead. But, but no, I will say this. I will say that that's one thing I, I have loved about battle rap. The mm. women of battle rap have always been be- very supportive of me, and you know, like I get Is voted. Is that what they call it? Okay. I get voted like they do like this little uh this in these female groups they be like voting like the top 10 most attractive battle rappers like every year i make the top five every year i've been in the top five for the last like because you was really years. outside you was really outside <laughs> no I that's wasn't. why <laughs> Yo, this nigga's great i mean <laughs> I, you know i've run into you a few times anyway that's neither here nor there <laughs> but no I, I always they always were very supportive of me and mm. i love female battle rap so I, that was always dope but yeah, I don't think I was outside. Like, now nah, you were sniping, brother. But uh, salute I, to that. 
I, your I, pen I might, game is incredible. Your snipe game is incredible. I might got a um, few, but I don't think I can. Yeah, you definitely do, brother. But, you know, <laughs> Yo, the thing this, about yeah. battle rap is there's so many things that happen behind the scenes that we don't speak about publicly. But this you're a sniper, crazy. brother. I've always respected that about Yo, you. Yeah, I swear to God, um, I don't think. Now, we got, now we, can, we can speak candidly. I don't think I snipe one person you know. Like, we not <laughs> doing <laughs> We're Cuban, not doing this. Cuban? <laughs> Cuban? That is not a lot. But listen, let's keep the interview going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Sure, brother. But um <laughs> But you know, on a on a more serious note, your reputation is impeccable out here. Um it, uh in this industry there there are, you know, like anything else, there's good people, there's bad people, but your reputation out here is very, very solid. You're a very honorable person. Um, men and women speak very highly of you. How have you maintained your integrity while navigating a very very toxic uh culture um just by being myself and honestly this is what i always tell people everybody has this idea of what real is made up in their mind when really the realest thing you could do is just be yourself like that's all it ever takes to be a real nigga is to just be true to yourself so for me and I don't treat battle rap like I see this a lot in the culture, but it's like me. I started my senior year of high school. So for me, it's like I don't get the the separation where it's like, oh, this is just battle rap. Because, you know, me, it's like as soon as I'm becoming grown, I'm coming into the real world and battle rap at the same time. So it's like to me, there is no difference. It's like, no, the shit you do and say in battle rap applies to real life like. I always say this to people. They be like, it's just battle rap. If I punch you in your face in battle rap, when you wake up tomorrow at home, did you get punched in your face yesterday? Yes. So it was like, I look at battle rap like that. Like, I don't do things in battle rap I wouldn't do in real life. I try my best not to say things in battle rap I wouldn't say in real life. But it's like, even in my battles, I limit myself material-wise because it's certain shit that I'm just not going to say and I'm not going to do because I don't agree with it off camera and I'm not going to compromise that to win a battle. So it's like me, I don't make up shit about my opponents. Like if I wrapped it to you, I need to know it's a fact or it's already public information like people already know about it, rap about it. I could show you my source via the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like I mm -hmm. don't... I don't deep dive. I don't dig. I don't do police work. I don't expose nobody. None of that shit. So it's like for me, I just try to navigate the culture the way I would navigate life. And I feel like there's no confusion that way. Because it's like if you would have did something to me in life that I felt like I would have hit you in your face for in battle rap, I would treat it the same way. You know what I mean? That's just how it nah, is. Nah, that's real. That's Man, real. Like I just, I don't have no separation. Like, if I feel disrespected in battle rap, I'm going to feel like you disrespected me in real life and vice versa. Like, that's just how how I am for the most part. And maybe maybe that's my downfall because I don't look at this as, as like the show as much as everybody else does. Like, I'm not always in composer, curator. Like, I'm not always thinking about the entertainment side. But I'll take that because I'd rather just be whoever I am. Like I don't, I don't want to fake anything or nothing like that. Like I just be myself. Like I smile, I laugh, I joke. You know what I mean? I got a more serious side too, but I never want to lead with that. So it's just like <laughs> that's just how I carry it in battle rap. Like oh, and I mind my business. Easiest way to stay out of shit in battle rap is just mind your business like that. Me, I see almost everything y'all see, and I even catch myself tweeting my opinion sometimes. I delete it. Like, whenever I think my opinion is not necessary or didn't belong, I always go back and delete it. Like, you know what? That's not my place. And I just I just move that way. Like, I try to be as, as, as necessary as possible. Like, I don't, you know, like, I see a lot of shit going on. I'd be like, nah, I'm not going to give my take on it unless I have a reason behind it. Like, I don't, you know. So, I'm switching gears here. Uh, your journey with just the OSBL portion of your journey uh we were talking about that earlier you met kels and walk me through how she you said she had told you she was going to book you how has your journey been with osbl um it's been it's probably been one of the fun the, the funnest stretches of my career like only because i felt like i was doing a lot for my area and I, that's always something that i wanted to do so it's like even the some of the shots i've gave like those are people who 
who like <laughs> had battling me on a bucket list. I couldn't believe it. So it's just like, you know, it's always been dope. And I've done some of the biggest and best work of my career with OSBL, as far as Chilla, far as Farah, far as Dot, Tay Rock. You know what I mean? Like, I've been on a I've been on a hell of a little run. And yeah, you kind of going crazy right now. It started with Eunice, actually. Eunice was the first battle on that little. See, the, the, the run was predetermined. So it was like, I kind of told Kales I had a plan. And I was like, I, and I decided I was going to make Eunice the start of my plan because he wanted to battle me. And he was talking a lot of shit. And I was just like, yo, man, he's young. He's playing with my name. He doesn't know any better. So I was just, you know. And it was like, I was in a more of a, I'm going to take everything serious bag. So you know, I battle, you'll battle some niggas and you know they're not that good. And you don't really know them like that. And you just don't be motivated. But then you learn, like, oh, yeah, after the battle, he's going to talk mad shit because you're actually good. And he feels like he got one up on you. And it's just be like, damn, I can't keep giving these people this false sense of reality. Because it's like, no, you're not actually that good. I just was on some bullshit. But it's like, I owe, I owe you better than to make you think you're better than what you are. So I need to start taking these battles more serious because people didn't let me think I was better than I was. Like I was always, (laughs) I was always aware of the fact that damn, I really need to get better. It's really shit I need to work on. And I don't see a lot of that in the people that's coming up now. Like, you know, everybody's undefeated. Everybody's a champion and shit. And I just be like, good God, (laughs) you know what I mean? Cause I'll be like, when I was coming up, it was like, Fans didn't even let you lie to yourself like that. Like, like you know what I'm That's saying? hilarious. Like, like, they'd be like, nigga, you ain't no champion. Like, you ain't undefeated, <laughs> boy. You need to work on this, 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 and that. They'd be telling you, like, real things. Like, your schemes is weak. Your metaphors are basic. And you'd be like, damn. So, <laughs> so you know what I mean? So, it'd be like, for me, I'd be like, now nah, I got to stop playing down in my competition. And I need to. That's why I wanted to take somebody relatively new who I didn't really know much about and I just get back to rapping and being hungry and, you know, just pushing myself. So then once you, then I just said, I wasn't going to stop. Told Kells, I'll take a pay cut or whatever is necessary for me to get bigger and better matchups. Like I just, you know, I wanted to go on a low run. Shout out to the revenge tour. You know what I mean? Just, you definitely, definitely did your thing with the revenge tour. I do want to say this. You've been at OSBL for a while. Who are, can you give us two or three people who are people we should look out for that are coming up? Uh, I love, uh, I love Kid Cash style. Kid Cash. Um, I don't know if I want to count Northeast Tay is coming up, but kind of, I'm, sure. I'm going to make him an honorable mention. I, I okay. got two more. Okay. And then I'm going to say, uh, oh, I, I, I'm a Gary Austin fan too. Uh, Gary Austin is one of them. Salute. Yeah, I love Gary. I'm a big fan of Gary. Uh, one more. Somebody coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and say. I'm gonna go ahead and say. Smoke, Smoke or Dreddy. They they mm. they've been putting in a lot of a lot of work recently. As far as okay. the newer guys. Okay, I respect that. I want to talk to you about legacy battles, and mm. I'm gonna throw three names at you. You know what I'm saying? And you tell me whether you would or would not battle them. Uh, I'm a huge Cuban fan. Cuban Hood. Let's get that out the way. Um, yes, sir. Um. First and foremost, we'll start with the ladies. You versus e Hart. I'm a win. I think that that is a style matchup that I really, really like. E-Hart Would you battle been, e Hart? e Hart has been badgering and picking with me and on me for years. I got nothing but smoke for e Hart. <laughs> so you've been ducking e Hart for this though. long? Out of respect, though, huh? You've been ducking e Hart for this long? Who's ducking? Nobody ever called me for e Hart. I would love to beat up on Erica. Lord Jesus. Okay, okay. I'm the worst person for Erica because it's like I really appreciate what she does, and I'm not like a I don't have to be super rowdy, rowdy, and nothing. Like I'm not coming here to bark on her. I'm coming here to wrap circles around her ass. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. okay. Next legacy matchup, and this is one that I personally am going to make sure that I make happen in 2024 because I fumbled. But um, you versus New Jersey twerk. <sighs> You know, it's crazy. Out of all of the potential battles that I could do, <clears throat> that's actually the one that probably bothers me the most. <laughs> what do you mean by that? No, I mean, Torque is a Torque is a very stressful person to prepare for, like, especially somebody like me. You know what I mean? Like, 
I was a Goonie. I was around before there was a Goonie. So it's like I've seen them prepare up close and personal many times. So it'd be like I really understand exactly what you're walking into and what you're dealing with to to battle him. And I know the extreme amount of respect that he has for me. So that's scary because I understand that, damn, no matter where I battle him at, I'm going to get a very high level twerk. So it's going to be dangerous. But, you know, that's what excites me. That's probably like the, you know, like my older brother, right? I have, a, I have an, another older brother where, and I'm talking about for between Tay Rock, Surf, anybody you could mention, he always only told me it's only one person where <laughs> before the battle, he might be scared for me. Like he think I'm going to lose. And his person was always twerk. Mainly because he's a hater, but yeah, he always <laughs> he always told me to stay away from twerk. Mad funny, so it's like I got to be your toughest on. battle if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably say that that that, in my opinion, on paper, would be one of my especially where he's at right now. And it's just stylistically. See, I just be telling people not everybody think it's just oh, oh, it's like nah, styles matter. He's he's stylistically gives me trouble for simple facts where it's like. Yeah, I got a pen, but it's like I wouldn't say my pen is better than Twerks per se. I wouldn't say I'm a better performer per se. It's just like now, it's just like, you know, because he's kind of good at everything. So it's like it's hard to attack his weak points with what you're better than him at. Because it's like, damn, I really got to think about what am I better than Twerk at? Twerk damn near good at everything. So, so it's just like stylistically preparing for that battle would be annoying. But that's honestly, that's a battle I want. I didn't I didn't think I wanted that battle until he himself told me basically he wanted to battle me and that I was ducking him. Now it's like, oh, so you got me <laughs> fucked up. So now you got me fucked up. That's he told me I, one. I he see told me I ducked him. I want to see that happen. I tried to make it happen last year and I dropped the ball. I'm going to make that happen in 2024. I need to see that for myself personally. Um, so Hart and Twerk are two legacy battles I'd love to see. But this third one is kind of left field. And I'm sure nobody's going to understand why I say this. But both both of y'all, I love y'all flows. We're not talking about what goes on outside of the ring and all the extras. Just flow versus flow. I want to see this battle so bad, and that's Cuban versus Averb. That's very random. I ain't it's lie. very <laughs> random, but it's all lie. about the <laughs> flow. Either either Cuban versus Averb or Cuban versus Calico. Those are one because just flow wise. You know, it's crazy. Um, based off styles, I think I think my style. Um, I, I think I could see a little Averb influence into the into the way I might I might write like my little. Cadences of I, there we I, I go. Could, the I flows, bro. Just understand. flow versus flow. I could understand how you how you got there, but, but you you and Calico right. though. I don't think, huh? You and Calico though. Oh, I, either one. Yeah, you know, see, this, those is battles where it's just like just getting these names on my resume is 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 a win. So it's like shit. I would love to, but I feel like with Calico and with Aver, like honestly, I'm just being honest. I feel like I'm much more explosive than A Verb. It is what it is. Like I, I, I don't, I don't, I know A Verb can rap. I don't got no funny puns and no disrespectful shit. I know he can rap. He a legend. I'm just, I just feel like I'm a little too explosive for him. I'm a little, you know, what I mean, like then Calico Verb would pack you up, brother. I don't know. Hold slow at, down, at what, I don't know what's I mean, going in promo, on. In promo, yes, because I'm not even gonna cut my phone <laughs> on that long. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about raps, you. man. Hell no, nah, man. You, you gotta understand. This? I can do what he do, but my my punches are gonna be a lot like bigger. Like, nah, I agree. I think your haymakers will be crazy, but his flow, I don't know those flow pockets that he gets into. Yo, listen, a lot of these niggas, when it comes to strictly flow pockets, a lot of these niggas can't fuck with me in just that aspect oh, alone. Man, in just oh, that aspect, man, alone. talk crazy. Let's say ninety percent of these niggas don't even rap with a cadence, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't be wanting to hear that Sesame Street talk talk you through my rap sad shit i don't want to hear that shit like I, I don't know what they make in battle rap but it's like you have to rap like this shit gotta rhyme it's gotta have some type of tempo like i'm not saying you gotta be flowing in and out your your pockets but i'm not trying to hear somebody just like talk on stage for three rounds like you can't rap you a rapper <laughs> like you know, okay. what I mean? doing that for segments in a round, or you got one. I'm gonna just talk to him this round, round cool. But when are you gonna rap? Like I, I, 
I don't know. Okay. I, okay. I and you I and Calico, I think content wise and and flow yeah. wise there too. That would be a fire I, match. I feel like penmanship is in my favor against against Calico. That might be the only thing in my favor in that battle, but I would love that battle, honestly. Yeah, I think that'd be a really dope battle. I don't want to really say actually I can't say why I'm a win because I need to I would need to use it to win first. But just I actually got a I got like a, a Bruce Wayne contingency plan for a nigga like Calico. I actually got like mm. yeah, like I'm I'm ready for any anybody of that sort. I got like a one fits all like body bag for them. When I, like you know, I wanted to battle easy to block captor some years ago back when he was calling me out on URL, only because he fits the mode. A easy to block captain, a calico, any of these super street i sold drugs niggas i got like a, a a casket for any of them like any of them. oh yeah yeah just like i seen you say uh me versus kid slade and you tried to switch it to dre dennis i have no interest in battling dre dennis i would no, I much definitely... rather battle kid slade you and kid slade would be kind of crazy he fits there too yeah i'm sorry listen i got a one fits all three street anti-street nigga round no nah, it's not even an anti-street nigga it's just it's just some things about myself and my life that I haven't had the proper battle to really execute these things in. And anybody like them, are oh, they about to walk into to hellfire? <laughs> like, like, I ain't going to say what it is, but I got some shit. <laughs> okay, okay. So looking back on your career, you have had fire matchups. You have had incredible battles. You have a strong name out here. You know what I'm saying? And as I said earlier in the controversial part of the interview, you put up some numbers in, ter in terms of sniping the baddies in battle rap. I refuse to um, He's lying. Of course, of course. Uh, but the next thing I want to ask you is, what is your legacy in battle rap, Cuban? You know, it's crazy. I, I really, because, you know, I be I ponder retirement all the time. Like, it, it's just, it'd be knocking at my door. And I'm against it heavily. Yeah. But go ahead. It, 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 it'd be knocking at my door. When I think of my legacy, I honestly just be like, it's it's like it's people from where I'm from who are who are battling at OSBL now, where it's like, and we I'm probably like a year or two older than them or something, like not even nothing crazy, but it's like <laughs> I'm one of the first battle battlers they ever seen. And I just be like, that is fucking crazy to me. Like when I think of the first battlers I ever seen, I'm thinking like like, I told Murder Mook or Sirius Jones this. Like, one of the first battles I can vividly remember watching and knowing what battle rap was was Mook versus Sirius Jones. So just to know that there's some people out there from my area who look at me as, like, this is the first time that they seen what battle rap was is just, it's, like, mind-blowing to me. You know what I mean? Because it's like, shit, I'm not even... I ain't even 30. I'm like, damn, what like what else gonna happen when I make it to 30 or some shit like that? Like, they gonna think I'm a legend or something. So it'll just be like, I don't, I haven't been able to really figure it out, but I definitely know I'm established in the 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 tapestry of, of Maryland's future for sure, like battle rap wise, like when it comes to my area, when it comes to Maryland, like I understand that I have done something, like I have accomplished things and you know like i just reached over a million views i don't know exactly when but not too long ago uh, for like my you know verse tracker or some shit and, you know verse tracker be missing battles and all of that so whatever views you got on verse tracker you always got like a little bit more because they don't update all the time so i was just like damn that's, you know i'm in the top 10 for views in my state and i'm just like man like it's kind of crazy because <laughs> I don't even have that many YouTube drops when I think about it like my biggest YouTube battle is Tay Rock but I'm just like when I dressed up like that boxer against Young Cannon if that was on YouTube I'm I'm a hundred percent sure I, I could have went viral triple platinum yeah if I could have promoted like the shit that me and she did like with the the stool and the the trainer no I'm sure I could have went viral so it's just you know, when I be thinking about certain things, like my, my Grizz performance would definitely got me a plaque of some sort, you know what I mean? So just when I, I be like, man, that's crazy. Like you really kind of then did some things like, you know, I really just wanted to torture niggas though. Like I just tell people the truth. Like I never really wanted to be no battle rap mega superstar. You know what I mean? I was never picking my battles. I was never, 
you know, I was never doing all of that. I just wanted to just be like, yo, there's a few niggas out here who know I tortured them. Like, there's nothing that could be argued about. Like, <laughs> there's some niggas out here who just know <laughs> I'm not I'm not the person. You know, and I've never lost a, you know, I've never lost a, a judge battle for money. I don't doubt that. I don't so doubt it'd be that like, for all. me, that, that, that be, you know, because I tell people, that's how I started with battle rap. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my first couple times ever battling at school and all of that shit, it was always for money. So I just be like, I know how to win a battle, and I take that shit very serious. So it'd be like, I, I feel like I got a good legacy, like something to be proud of. Battle. Rap. I want to tell you something, Cuban. Me personally, I have been a Cuban fan for the longest time, and when I stepped out and started sponsoring live battles. The Tay Rock versus Cuban battle solidified me as a sponsor. So I can tell you, just me personally, you've affected my life tremendously. Uh, oh, that battle is currently at 293,000 views, almost at 300,000 views. It is the highest view battle on the OSBL channel. Now, when I say something, if I reach out to a league and I say something, they listen very closely because you gave me that opportunity and solidified my company so I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You a legend in my eyes. What you've done for where you're from, what you've done for me personally, and what you're going to continue to do in this game because we're not letting you quit ever. You know, I really I appreciate you. Know, I appreciate that from you only because it's like <laughs> when you hit me up, it was like pick anybody you want to battle, I'll sponsor it. I want y'all to know. <laughs> I had just got done telling Frank how I quit and shit. <laughs> and he like, nah, man, you can't quit. Like, just tell me anybody. And I'm like, shit, before I go, I'm like, I got to see Tay Rock. I'm just, you know, because I didn't think it was real either. I'm like, this nigga Frank ain't about to really sponsor no battle. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell this nigga Tay Rock. <laughs> and I knew Tay Rock wasn't going to tax the battle me, but I also knew the name Tay Rock would scare off anybody who wasn't about what they were saying so when i said tay rock i i frank didn't know that i already had tay rock's word that he would battle with me or against me whatever would help me the most and that he would make it you know affordable like make it happen frank didn't know that i just told him the name and frank was like mm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, you should have seen my face when I looked at the message. Yeah, he because I just knew in his mind he's thinking that this is at least uh like a ten thousand dollar, eight thousand dollar investment. And it, and shout out to Tay Rock. One of my favorite lines he said to me is when he said he didn't overcharge a tax for me. He really did. Which was facts. He really looked out for everybody. But yeah, he gave Cuban, it don't even happen without you even you know what I'm saying? So no, I ain't gonna still... lie. I did have to, you know, when I first said, like, yo, I, I, yo, I want to I want battle Tay Rock, I got a sponsor. I ain't gonna lie. People, <laughs> nobody believes you. <laughs> At all. At all. <laughs> I, I basically had to, I basically had to put my own integrity down for, you know, for yours. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was basically yeah, like. nobody knew who the, what the fuck was we the fan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's like Kels. I'm telling Kels, like, yo, I know Frank. And she's like. Are you sure? Because, you know, it's all of these sponsors. You know, there's horror stories throughout Battle Rap. And a lot of sponsors get into Battle Rap and then they're horrified. So they run away. You know what I mean? 100%. So, yeah. So it's like, I'm telling, I'm like, no, look, I know Frank. I like, I'm telling you, we're like, he's good. Like, I, I'm doing this for the league. Like, that's what I told her. Like, and I told her straight up. I'm bringing, I feel like I'm bringing Frank to OSBL. Like, I'm telling you, I'm doing you the biggest and favor I feel like I could possibly be doing. And, did. and then it's like, once everything went the way it went, when I see you working with OSBL, I feel special and I feel a part of that because I feel like, damn, I, I, my plan worked. Like, it's like, instead of me just trying to benefit because Frank wants to sponsor me a battle, I'm like, nah, it's like, I got a whole home league of of people who could benefit from having a working relationship with frank like you know what i mean period like sponsoring you sponsoring a battle i'm like he should be sponsoring events and all the reason i was thinking like that is because i had a homie shout out to swag tana and galarche my my personal friend of mine sponsored band legacy too swag and galarche sponsored that whole url event you know what i mean so it was like i was just thinking like nah frank Frank needs more than to just help me. Like he he could be doing We the Fans whole events uh, instead of just one battle and stuff like that. So that was just like a 
it was a full circle moment for me, I would say. Yeah. You a uh, legend. And I did that not just the sole reason I did that is because Cuban, you have been a stand up nigga from the first day I met you. And even before I even knew who you were and how people spoke about you and the countless amounts of opportunities you provided for space battlers. It was only right that I start with someone who's given opportunities to the space community. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so speaking thank of you. space battles, matter of fact, I want to say this. One of the hardest space battles I ever had to prepare for was Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jinx. <laughs> and it's funny because I know Jinx probably think I got like, I don't know, maybe some bad energy towards him because I, I was I was angry on that space. I can't remember who pissed me off. But it was just like <laughs> not it was hard to battle Jenks because one, I didn't know shit about him. Only thing I knew is he's like fucking six ten, and he weighed like two hundred, yeah. like seventy pounds or some shit. Like he's like a fucking, <laughs> he like a JUCO center or something. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that's all, all I right, knew man, about not him. Not too like, much on my boy. Jinx. No, I mean they say they say the nigga like play overseas or something. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, that, he did no, play. Like, yeah, he did. Yeah, play. that ain't no laughing matter. That's dope. <laughs> I was like, that's all I. And it's like I'm a basketball nigga, so I'm like. I'm not making fun of nobody for playing overseas. Like I know it's an angle. I know I can rap about it, but I'm just like, that's where my, my moral compass in my career conflict again, where it's just like, yeah, I probably could get away with it in battle rap too, but I genuinely think that's dope. So I'm not going to rap about it. And then I'm like, his name sucks. Like there's only, but so many Jenkins, Jinx, Jinkies. Like, there's only, but so many of them. And he Thank you for a, not having no family Jenkins vacation bars. Thank oh, of you. course not. Of course not. So then I'm just <laughs> like, then he ain't had that many battles, but he was dope. I'm like, damn, the nigga could rap. His name sucks. I don't know shit about him. And he don't got a lot of battles. I was like, this shit is hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> like preparing for him in a little amount of time I did. I was like, yeah, he's never getting another battle out of me. Like, I hope he don't <laughs> want to battle in person. I'm going to be like, yo, no offense, bro. They're not gonna pay me what I'm gonna charge because your name is like I'm gonna be battling you with all generals. Like I don't I don't got no name flips for you. I, so I'm gonna say hell. shout out to the spaces because I like spaces and me personally because I'm like things like this didn't exist when I was coming up because I'm just like man, do you know how happy I would have been that I could have got an online Danny Myers battle? Like you know how much easier it is to get Danny Myers to click on Twitter spaces for 10 minutes than it is to get him to fly to your city and do a one rounder. Like, I we can make I would, that happen wherever. You know what I'm saying? You and Danny I'm rematch. I'm Danny with that. Again. I we need that rematch anyway. I won. So <laughs> Dan, Danny needs to uh, listen. You know, Danny says some shit to me in that battle that <laughs> that really like and it and I don't even know if this shit was true or nothing. It just I was like, yo, why would he say that to me? Like, yo, Danny, <laughs> one of them people that'll just say some shit. You just be like, what'd he say to me? He said, this nigga gonna say, uh, uh, and I, I I, think sir stole your style. So it's like, if I had the little thought bubble going through my mind, I'm like, yeah, Danny, yeah. Tell them some shit like that. <laughs> tell them some free shit. Free to wave, like, man. Tell free them, to wave. Yeah, free to wave. Tell them they stealing from me. Then he was like, yeah. Cause he fucked your bitch like you. I was like, whoa! Why would oh you say my that, God. Danny? I'm like, yo, Danny. I thought we was friends, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm on stage, like, yo, this old nigga's out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to Danny, man. I'm like, yo, that was that was a wild bar. <laughs> nah, Cuban, you a legend, bro. I need you to know that. I appreciate everything you've done for the culture. Nah, I, appreciate I appreciate everything you, you continue buddy. to do for your region. And um, I want to tell you, keep going. Uh, thank you for letting me sponsor Tay Rock versus Cuban. And next, 2024, New Jersey Twerk versus Cuban. I will personally make sure I sponsor that battle. God and I'm going to talk you. twerk. I'm going to talk twerk in a battle and be three rounds for his one round. Yeah, I think price. it's going to have to be. It's going to have to watch, be three watch rounds. Watch me work. Bro. Let's get, let's I'm, make I'm, it happen. I'm going to tell him, I'm like, yo, I got I got a cart in the Newport 100s for you. <laughs> Let's go, bogey. <laughs> you got to nah, get niggas where you, know, where you know where it's important to them. I got I got that inside information. I got a case of Parmesan, nigga. A cart nah. in the Newport 100s. Just, that is just give, me, give me three rounds for the one round of price. No freaky. <laughs> you know no, that's insane. <laughs> but we do need to see that battle, Brody. And thank you for everything, bro. Thank you for everything you do for your nah, region. Thank you, too, thank Brody. You for Tell doing Fon, this interview. come outside. I see you, nigga. You don't oh, want to book me to come to Cleveland, then, uh, yeah. <laughs>
I'm oh, tired shit. of the bullshit. So I'm Fonz not, versus Cuban? Fonz. Fonz, my man. I know Fonz a long time. I, I asked him to book me. He ain't did it, so he must want to smoke. And that's how I'm going to treat it. Yeah, <laughs> anybody I know who got a league who hasn't booked me, lace up, nigga, because you clearly don't fuck with me. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> <laughs> Salute to you, Cuban. Thank you for your time. This is Keep It Rap episode four.